Hello everyone, welcome back to another Broadway Fit Vlog. Tonight I'm at Waitress the Musical. I didn't get the chance to talk beforehand, so this is the pretend it's the start of the vlog, but it's not, it's actually the interval. And now I'll show you through getting into the theater and all of that, and then we'll jump back here and I'll quickly splurge out some interval thoughts. It's eight o'clock on Thursday the 25th of January and I'm about to head out and try and get some Rush tickets. I kind of want to try for Dear Evan Hansen, but I also really want to see Waitress. And if not, my backup plan is the band's visit. So let's see what happens. I'd update you on my ticket situation. So I was obviously rushing for Waitress this morning and I thought it would be easier because basically I could either see Waitress tonight or I could see Waitress Sunday night. I thought I don't want to rush on Sunday because that would mean like missing part of Broadway Con because Sunday the box office opens at 12. Yeah, I don't want to be queuing on a Sunday morning and then miss start of Broadway Con. I queued up at Waitress hoping to see it tonight because really that was my top choice. Like I really wanted to see Waitress. The queue was massive when I got there. I got there at 25 past eight and it was just crazy. So I waited, I thought I'm here now, I'm not gonna move around, I'm just gonna stick at it, see what I can get. When the box office opened, someone came out and said there's only nine Rush tickets left. Nine. And like, there was at least 16 to 18 people in front of me. I thought, oh God, nothing for tonight then. So I went in and the cheapest for tonight was $230, which I wasn't happy to spend. And then I thought, while I'm here, I'm gonna ask for Sunday and see what they've got. And they had a seat at $109 and I bought it because obviously I did. It's been such a successful morning and this is great because now I just don't have to rush for the rest of the trip. Don't have to worry about it at all. So feeling very good. So obviously it's the interval of Waitress. I'm seeing Sarah Bareilles and Jason Mraz and oh my God. I must admit, I'm mainly here for Sarah because like she's just incredible. And to see someone in the show who was like in the creative team and like wrote the show, like that's really exciting and she's so good. I managed to get my ticket the other day. I was rushing for this on Thursday. It's now Sunday and they didn't have any rush tickets that I could get on Thursday, but I managed to get this ticket, which was $109 obviously for tonight it's partial view but it's fine because I've seen the show before and oh my god it's just as good as I remember the show is so good I'm obsessed I love it and I'm so glad I'm getting to see it again anyway it's a really short interval like 15 minutes so I'm gonna try and go grab a drink because I'm really thirsty and yeah get back into my seat and I love this show so much I'm having a really good time <laughs>
everyone, welcome back to the chatty section of the vlog. As you saw, I went to see Waitress on Broadway again. Ugh, I'm so, so lucky and grateful that I managed to see Waitress again. So I saw it back in September of 2017 and I loved it. It was my first time seeing the show and I got to see Betsy Wolf, who I've loved from afar for years. So it was wonderful to see her, but obviously this time around, Sarah Bareilles had rejoined the cast. Also, Jason Mraz was in the cast. And it turns out that it was almost like seeing a completely new cast because there was a new actress for Becky. I had an understudy for Dawn. There was a new, um, there was a new Earl, there was a new Cal, a new old Joe. It was like an overhaul. Basically the only same principal character that I saw this time around was Christopher Fitzgerald as Ogie. Obviously when I go over to New York, I try and see new stuff. Um, I try not to see a show that I could easily see in London, but this time when I went back to New York, I saw Wicked again. And I try not to repeat visit, because again, I want to try and see new shows, but I loved Waitress so much. And I really wanted to at least try and see Sarah Bareilles as Jenna. And then when I realized that there would be so many different cast members, it's kind of like seeing a different show, right? I just really wanted to see it again, to be honest. And no one's the boss of me, apart from my boss at work. I can see whatever Broadway shows I want. <laughs> As you saw in the vlog, I managed to not get a rush ticket. I queued up in the rush line on the Thursday, but actually managed to buy a ticket for the Sunday evening performance, which worked out perfectly. Because I was at Broadway Con that weekend, I really didn't want to be in a rush line on Sunday morning and miss out on the stuff that was happening and then like maybe not get a ticket. You know, there was no guarantee. So to be able to get that ticket for Sunday on the Thursday, it really solved so many problems. I knew that it was going to be a restricted view seat, but obviously I have seen the show before. So I knew that I wasn't going to miss out on anything too important. I know what's going on in the bits I was missing. So as you saw, I was on the far right hand side of the orchestra which for us Brits is the stall section. I actually thought I was gonna be on the other side, but that's fine because I actually would have missed more if I'd been on the other side. The main things that I missed out on seeing was the band, I think, story-wise. I don't think I actually missed out on anything. It was a really good view and obviously I was really close as well, which was great. And oh my God, I just love this show so much. And also just a quick side note, I went to a talk that happened, like a panel at BroadwayCon that was all about Waitress. So Stephanie Torns, the understudy and ensemble member for, well, she was understudy for Jenna. She was there along with, I've completely forgotten her name, but basically the incredible woman who makes pretty much all of the pies. She was there and there was a couple of other people. My brain escapes me, it's been a while now. But yeah, it was a talk about the show and like a Q and A. I feel like I had a newfound appreciation for the show having heard that talk, especially in terms of the pies, this is such a weird thing, but to hear that the woman who makes all the pies she literally like is constantly making them because she's not only making them for Broadway, she's making them for the tour and just the sort of process of how the show developed to the point that it's at right now. In the proscenium, there are like faux pies and the producers wanted them to all be real. And you just think, producers, what were you thinking? How, no, that, no, <laughs> I've not counted, but there are a lot of pies there. And the fact that they wanted them to all be real is just hilarious to me because, oh my God, could you imagine the costs and the waste? Oh my goodness. There were just so many things from that talk that made me really appreciate the show a lot more and like the design aspects and the intricacies of the show. And I loved this show enough as it was beforehand, so. <sighs> Where to begin, oh my gosh. So walking into this theater is a pure delight because it smells of pie. <laughs> it smells so, so nice. It really like envelops you into the atmosphere straight away. Like that whole atmosphere of being in a diner that specializes in pies, like you're in it straight away, walking into the foyer and oh man, it's just incredible. It smells so good. I didn't actually buy a pie this time, I behaved myself. I did buy a pie on my previous visit, but I bought a bit 
more merchandise. So that's where my money went. By the way, I can't remember if I've mentioned it in the vlog, I probably have, but the ticket I managed to get was $109 and it was a lot cheaper than what I was expecting to pay. Uh, my comfortable max to see this show again was like 200 something dollars. So to pay 109, I was very grateful for that. I was more excited about seeing Sarah Bareilles, uh, not so fast about seeing Jason Mraz. I feel really bad saying that, but I really liked watching um, Drew Galing play the role of Dr. Pometer. Yeah, I was kind of like, it'll be cool to see Jason Mraz in a show, but I'm not like mad thrilled on that. I'm just gonna talk about him first because I'm talking about it. But yeah, he didn't blow me away, to be honest. I remember really enjoying his music actually, especially in my teenage years. So obviously his singing voice was lovely, but he was a bit odd in the role, I'm not gonna lie. So Dr. Pometer is a bit of, I don't really wanna say like, geeky but it's sometimes a little bit awkward and makes some like silly awkward comments and I just felt like Jason Mraz played that too much and yeah it just felt a bit weird watching him in a way and I know that's kind of the point but I don't know I didn't love his portrayal um Sorry to any Jason Mraz fans out there, please don't kill me. Sarah Bareilles though, I really, really enjoyed watching her as Jenna. I think one of the main reasons why I wanted to see her, not only because I have been like a fan of her for a long time, not like a huge out there, like I'm a Sarah Bareilles fan, but you know, she's one of those people that I've always enjoyed listening to her music. Not only that, but obviously when you see someone like that in this role that they have like, nurtured and created. It's kind of like if you saw Lin-Manuel Miranda in Hamilton, like it's that thing of seeing the creator in the role and just one of those like once in a lifetime opportunities, you know? Because obviously being so close to the show, I feel like she did have so much raw emotion in the role and she also had a lot of fun with it though, which I really liked. As I mentioned, I saw Betsy Wolf in the role previously and I think overall I probably preferred the way Betsy played it it was potentially a bit more, a little bit more, I don't wanna say polished. I don't know, personally, for me, I probably enjoyed Betsy's version more. But as I say, there was something really magical about seeing Sarah playing the role of Jenna. I'm so glad that I managed to get a ticket. I am so, so glad. She also threw in some crazy little changes in some of the songs, which I, really enjoyed. The only sad thing about seeing a show like this with like a celebrity in is the way that American audiences especially react. Like she'd be finishing off a song, she'd do a fun crazy note and then people would be cheering before she was done. And I'm like, can you just wait? Can you just wait until she's done and then go crazy? Please. I'm just very British. <laughs> As I mentioned, I had a lot of different people. So, Here's the understudy slip for our night. So Dawn played by Molly Job. I'm guessing that's how to say her name. And Nurse Norma had an understudy for her. So yeah, even with understudies included, I had loads of different people on. So for the role of Becky, it was Natasha Vett Williams. And it would normally be Caitlin Houlihan playing Dawn. But as I say, she was off, so I had Molly, Molly Job, and Christopher Fitzgerald as Ogie. And then who else did I have new? I had Benny Elledge playing the role of Cal, and Dakin Matthews playing the role of Joe, and Joe Tippett playing the role of Earl. So yeah, quite a few newbies. I mentioned this in the previous vlog, I'm um, talking about the character of Earl. Earl is such a dick, I cannot stand Damn this character. I don't feel like Joe Tippett played it as well. I think it was Carl Swenson the last time I saw it. Svensson? Swenson? Yeah, I don't think his portrayal was as strong, but also I don't know if that's because I just really hate the character. But thankfully this time around, the audience didn't respond as well to his like jokes, which I appreciated. Because when the audience last time were laughing at some of the things he was saying, and I was just like, no. He's a dick. I know it's a musical, but no. <laughs> I thought Molly Job was actually really good as Dawn. I really liked her. I mean, that character, Bless, is so cute and funny. And yeah, I really, really liked her. She was quite similar vocally, like she sounded very similar 
to Caitlyn. They're very similar in terms of portrayals. I was very happy to see her, it was great. I love seeing understudies, especially when it is a role that I've already seen played by someone else. Like Caitlyn was amazing, don't get me wrong. But yeah, it's always nice to see new people as well, especially when obviously I don't live in New York, so to get that chance to see some understudies is always nice. As I mentioned, I also had a different Becky this time. So the last time I saw the show was played by Maya Wilson. This time, Natasha Yvette Williams was playing the role of Becky. And I really liked Maya's portrayal. So I didn't love Natasha's as much. Like she was still good in terms of like the vocals and the, what's the word I'm looking for? The vocals and just the portrayal in general, I, I did prefer Myers. But as I say, that's not to say Natasha was bad. That's just my personal preference. Christopher Fitzgerald was somehow even wackier this time round. Like I thought he was crazy in the role when I last saw him, but Jesus, this time round, even funnier, even crazier. He's brilliant, so funny. The character is crazy and he does it really well. <laughs> Obviously I went back to Waitress because I loved it. I still love it just as much. And I really, 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 really want it to come to London. So fingers crossed, it'll be in the West End in the next kind of couple of years. There were rumors that it would be here by spring of this year, but that's not gonna happen. I just think it's such a wonderful show. The music's gorgeous. I have so many people in mind for who I'd love to play each role. So I'll definitely be doing a Dreamcast video on this show at some point. And yeah, oh my gosh, I wish that I could see it loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of times but obviously i i can't because i'm over here in london and it's over there in new york i would love to know if you've been to see the show either on broadway or on the us tour that it's currently doing i'd love to know your thoughts on the show and who you've been able to see because i feel like they change the cast members like every week it seems yeah i'd love to know who you've been to see and what you've thought of them if you've enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of me in the future i make a lot of theater content and there's quite a lot of broadway stuff on the channel at the moment as well so if you're from the us or you love broadway stuff then there'll be a playlist linked below of like my broadway related videos if you want to check those out specifically i hope you're all doing really well and i will see you in my next video. Bye!